everybody, and welcome to Mixed Media 101. I'm Courtney Kibitza. Today, I'll be your pres presenter for this presentation. And I want to talk a lot about uh, mixed media and how you can create mixed media looks that really sell. Um, being able to mix and match different materials, whether it's heat transfer vinyl and CAD cut materials, or screen printed transfers and digital transfers and mixing different items together, it usually allows you to create really high-end looks that are unique to a basic print and allows you to sell and make more profit for your business. So today, what I want to do is I want to go over a lot of what to look for and how to do mixed media and layering, specifically with different materials from CAD cut to screen printed transfers and even some digital transfers so we can understand what applications, what shortcuts, what materials can be layered and all of those things on layering and how we can get started creating these applications. So to get started, what I want to do is I'm going to create a basics design um, using a two color fashion film design. Now with this product, with any product really, when you're mixing and matching and layering heat transfer vinyls, you want to make sure that you're checking your recommended application from your supplier and ensuring that the material that you're using has what's called a multi-step application or a multi-color application. That's going to allow you to ensure that you can either speed up the process or um, be able to directly layer the material. Some products are not recommended for direct layering, so I always like to caution you to be careful to check what you're using can be layered, but all of the products that I'm showing you today, I'll go through exactly what can be layered on top, what can be layered on the bottom, and all of those things to get started. So I think it's best to head over to the heat press where we'll talk about different things that we can start to mix and match with these basic designs. So the first design that we have here is just a two color fashion film design. So this design specifically has been created in a way that it actually direct layers. So you're noticing when I tear this apart um, that I have two separate layers for this mixed media design. The background is a completely solid image. Um, direct layering traditionally tends to be the easiest way for people to align graphics and that's why a lot of the time that we see it done in this method rather than a gap or a trap that we'll show you later where the inside of this artwork would have been cut out. Now with direct layering, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my t-shirt onto my platen here. I actually have a lady shirt so I'm going to switch this out to a smaller 11 by 15. And then I can start my application. So when I direct layer different materials, what I want to do is I want to look again for that multicolor application option. The multicolor application will allow me to speed up the production and also help in alignment and different applications there. So for my first step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually line up my first color of the design, that same hot pink background. You'll notice this product in CAD Cut Fashion Film is neon pink. Um, neon specifically are materials that sometimes cannot be layered. CAD Cut Fashion Film materials in this product as well as CatCut Premium Plus from Stalls are able to be direct layered, so those are great products to start with. If you're familiar with CatCut Fashion Film, you know it normally applies at 15 seconds. I'm just going to tack this down for two quick seconds, and then I'm going to hot peel the carrier. Fashion Film allows me to do that, and where the real big benefit of creating this fast tack, other than the fact that it saves me some time in production, is that it helps to reduce any shrinking that we often see with the background layer. So if you've ever cut a two color design and you went to line up your second color like this, we see it a lot of the times with a contour like you see here. You'll notice it can be difficult, sometimes it looks like the vinyl is shrinking and so it's not pre-spaced the way it was in your artwork. That two second tack helps to eliminate a lot of the issues that we see because it's reducing any shrinking that it's received from extra time under the heat press. So I can easily line that up. You're noticing how the artwork is spaced the same way it was when I created it in my software on this clear carrier. It keeps it pre-spaced. Also another thing with this specific design is you're noticing Fashion Film has a very clear carrier. So it's really easy to line stuff up because you can, can completely see through um, the first layer to get to the background. If you have vinyl exposed with mixed media, you definitely want to make sure to be careful and cover it with a cover sheet. That way any background layers don't stick to your top heater. And then for this application, I want to apply it for the full application. So instead of it being a two second tack, I want to make sure everything gets the full 15 seconds that it needs. So I'm going to seal the pink and the black down for a full 15 second application. 
and then I can hot peel that carrier. And of course, the neon color changes a little bit underneath the heat, but it'll change back. You'll also notice how CatCut Fashion Film, if you've never used it, the carrier really um, peels off very easily very re and releases very nicely. There's not a whole lot of grab to it, so I don't have any issues with stretching. If you have a material that you notice whenever you go to pull it, maybe a stretchy heat transfer material and it kind of holds on a little bit, um, you may have some issues with distorting. So you want to be careful not to stretch and rip that background design with mixed media. And so that's why fashion film also works well for those types of applications. So that's kind of a great basic design that we're looking for here with fashion film. Now one thing about direct layering like I've done here is it adds a little bit of a fill to the garment. So what a lot of people will do instead of actually direct layering is for mixed media we'll switch to a design where we're actually doing a trapping method. So for this design, instead of me directly layering my material with fashion film, I've actually went ahead and created an outline around the outside of it. That allows me to only have one layer on the garment. It just makes it feel a lot softer, especially if it's a lighter weight ladies garment, um, like we see a lot right now in today's tri-blend market. So I'm going to go ahead and load this crop top onto my heat press platen here. And then the two products I'm layering here, I wanted to add a little bit of change to this material. So I've got the CatCut Fashion Film and the Neon Color Coral, or color, the color Neon Coral. And then I've actually went ahead and added a little bit of bling with CatCut Hologram. So CatCut Hologram is just really more of an um, iridescent holographic heat transfer material. Uh, this product specifically cannot be direct layered on top of it. So if I wanted to make this as just a second layer on top of fashion film, I could certainly do so and directly layer that on top. But CatCut fashion or CatCut hologram could never be the background, so I couldn't lay fashion film directly over to where it was touching the hologram. So good things to keep in mind. Also, when you're choosing materials like I've done here, CatCut fashion film applies at 320 degrees. That's a very standard temperature that we see a lot with heat transfer materials. Um, you'll notice as you look at special effect products, glitters, holograms, reflectives, flocks, everything that you're going to want to use mixed media for, they tend to apply around 320 degrees. So if you can choose a material that also applies at that temperature, it makes mixed media really easy because you can keep your temperature at that same application. So just like with the first design, I'm going to tack this for two seconds and hot peel my carrier. That allows me to create that background design. And then I can actually inlay my CAD cut hologram in throughout my design. If I get the trapping here correct. Has just a little bit of a gap outline. When you set up your artwork, um, you can get creative with choosing how much of an outline you want throughout the artwork. Um, a little bit more of an outline on the outside helps to make it easier to line things up and all of that. Now I'm going to cover this here and seal it for the full application. So fashion film needs 15 seconds for a durable print. CatCut hologram only needs 10 seconds. When I mix and match materials that have different temperatures or different times, uh, with the time I always make sure to go on the high end. So I want to take this up to 15 seconds. That way I can ensure the CatCut hologram and the glitter and the fashion film are going to get the same application. CatCut hologram can easily take that extra five seconds. So don't have to worry any issues there, but if you're going to mix two medias, always go on the high end of time, making sure both layers get their full durable application. So CatCut Hologram is going to be a cold peel, so I'm going to let it cool down a little bit here. But while that's cooling down, what I want to do is talk about um, a challenge that we often see with mixed match or mixed media designs in CatCut materials, and you'll notice how the carrier of my land design actually stops here, so it's cutting through my Dance Academy logo. And so when I go to peel this back off, what I'm going to have is called a carrier mark or an indention. This is a common challenge that we see with mixed media. Um, of course, you could cut this box so that you have a little bit extra to overlap and you wouldn't have that problem. But then you've got some extra waste, and we don't really want to waste extra cat cut material if we don't have to. Um, and so one way to get rid of that carrier mark, if you notice it here, would be just to cover this back up with a cover sheet and just kind of iron it or press it back out for another five seconds. Um, that will help to get out some of those wrinkle or some of those lines from that carrier. 
giving you more of a smooth finish. And then the next design we'll look at will actually show of another way to avoid those carrier marks or indentions. But you'll notice as it's picking up on the screen there, that landy um, outline with the hologram really creates a, almost a faux rhinestone look. And so if you do a lot of mixed media with heat transfer vinyl and rhinestones, this is a really great low cost alternative for just a unique design for a different group. Uh, it makes a really cool trendy piece for a variety of different applications. Okay, so for my next mixed media design, what I want to look at is how to eliminate that indention mark with mixed media um, and also some other things to consider. So I've got a two color design here. I'm actually going to switch my platen back out since I have a large men's t-shirt and a rather large design as well. All right, once I drop that in there, I can load my t-shirt onto my heat press, making sure to get all of the collars and seams off, preheated. Sometimes when you adjust the, or change out the platen, you may notice you need to adjust the pressure overhead. So I'm just adjusting this knob here on the top till I get it down to being the medium pressure I need it to be. So for my background layer here, what I'm using is a product that's a little bit unique. It's called Super Tech Clear Matte. If you haven't seen this material, the clear part is actually the football that you're seeing and the um, kind of frosted part is the carrier. This makes for a really cool background and images and just creates kind of a laser etched look. So it makes a really great application for backgrounds of mixed media. Unfortunately, when you usually do a large background like this, this is where you're going to see that indention mark for any you put over top of it. So we need to get creative with the application. I'm going to apply Super Tech Clear for 10 seconds at the 320 degree application that I'm at. If you've used this material, it has a flexible application. So it goes from 280 to 320 degrees. I chose 320 because I'm using another material that also applies at 320 degrees. Um, now, when you do the 320, it does take a little longer to cool down since it's a little bit hotter, and this product is a cold peel. So ideally, if I was doing mixed media with this type of product, I would go through and press all of my backgrounds, lay them aside, and then bring them back and peel them cold at the heat press as I lay over, overlay my second color. So I need a couple more seconds. Now I get a little impatient and I start to peel it because it really creates a cool effect on the shirt. Take it off and let it cool down. Karen, do I have questions coming in while we're letting this cool completely? Do any of the fun materials like hologram and neons or rhinestones apply to nylon? Neons, holograms, and rhinestones. Unfortunately, no. Um, none of those will apply to nylon. What you can do is you can actually do mixed media on the nylon and use a um, background of the material that allows you to um, getting a little bit of a pill there from it still being warm. Um, but you could use a background that has a nylon adhesive. So if I was using, say, a CAD Cut Gorilla Grip, I could use that material as the background that then sticks to nylon and then overlay my hologram or my glitter flake or rhinestones. Um, well, not rhinestones. Rhinestones wouldn't work directly on top of the nylon material, but you could certainly do something like glitter flake or hologram on top of Gorilla Grip to get that nylon backing and seal that bling finish. Any other questions, Karen, that I've gotten? Okay, perfect. So you'll see here that I have that laser etched look backing that I received from the SuperTech Clear Matte material. Now I'm just going to inlay that extra design in the um, CadCut Fashion Film. So if you remember in the earlier application, CadCut Fashion Film allowed me to do a two-step tack where I could just easily tack this down for two seconds and hot peel the carrier. Now that worked really great for background designs, but it also works perfect for the foreground because it allows me to eliminate any carrier marks that I could get on the background of this application because I'm only doing it for two seconds instead of the full 15. That carrier doesn't really have time to set in there. Now I want to make sure this stays durable to my customers, so I can't send this out just yet. 
So I'm going to press it for the full application now at 15 seconds just to make sure both colors get enough application and I've got a really nice durable print there. So that was able to create our cool mixed media look. This is something I see really popular this year for fan wear and just different designs. Um, really getting creative with different garments. This one's just a standard um, gray t-shirt. This product, um, the Super Tech Clear Matte, tends to show up best on darker colors. So charcoal, dark gray, black, navy, red even. Um, just creates that kind of ghosted, laser etched appearance on the background. Karen, did I have a question? Will that work with the glaze material? Um, as far as putting the glaze material on the background, I would just test the application. We haven't um, tested it with all of the different materials, so you would want to make sure you put it through your wash testing to ensure that it's durable. But we've used it a lot with fashion film and had many washes at our office here, and we've been able to have success with it. So you just want to double check, um, but it would work the same way. Also creates a really cool iridescent background with that glaze. All right, so for my next design, I want to go a little bit more unique and work on a three-color vinyl design. And so what I often see a lot of the times is um, challenges with layering designs like this that have multiple layers, multiple colors into them. And they're not directly layered, but they all work together to create one image or one piece. So what I normally do is I take these three colors pre-spaced the way they all would be set up, and I line them up here on my t-shirt. This is a good way to make sure you have the design where you want it to be. If not, you may find that when you get to that top layer, it may be coming up onto the collar in the wrong part of the design because you put the background layer in the wrong place. So I always like to line them all up together, place them down onto the shirt, and then I can slowly peel back and separate my colors. So I've got the red to go first, so I'm just going to tack this red design down. It's CAD cut fashion film as well, so I'm going to do two seconds. I can hot peel that carrier. I'm going to take the pink part of my design. You'll notice that clear carrier fashion film makes it a lot easier to be able to see where I'm lining things up in the ribbon and also in my wagon. I don't have any vinyl exposed, so I technically don't need to use a cover sheet, but it's always good to be careful and cover that up if you have anything exposed or anything could be on the heater. I tack that pink for two seconds, so so far I'm only at a total of four second applications. Two seconds on the red and two seconds on the pink. And then I'm going to inlay my blue design. Now this material, although it completely covers it, um, I do have a little bit of the wheel showing, so I'm going to cover it with a cover sheet. The top layer you're noticing is actually CAD cut glitter flake, so it adds that little bit of a sparkle and just creates a different element to the design. CAD cut glitter flake applies for 10 full seconds and fashion film applies at 15 seconds. Both at 320 degrees, so I'm going to leave my temperature at 320. But of course, I just want to make sure I'm giving a full 15 second application to ensure both colors of fashion film and the glitter flake get its complete application. I always say, when in doubt, go on the high end of time because you always want to have a little more temperature, a little more time than not enough. Helps to reduce the risk that things will come back. I know a lot of decorators even heat press stuff twice even though they don't need to, just in case for that little bit of extra something. Maybe you here on the uh, a class today. So I'll peel that carrier back. And then we've got a really cool just mixed media look that just creates a three color design and just takes the design to the next level. The important thing to mention here with mixed media and heat transfer vinyls is what I just did was three colors. It was very fast and very easy, but when you get past three colors, although you can two second tack and directly layer, um, once you get past three, even four layers, you may want to look at a digital transfer option that tends to be less expensive because you're only using one type of material. While it can be mixed together, you just want to keep in mind to you know, try to use digital transfers when you can to keep your costs low. Um, but that's another great application. 
Glitter Flake in general is um, one of the more popular products that we see people doing mixed media with, whether it's with fashion film or with hologram or uh, thermofilm, and also glitter on glitter. So we see a lot of decorators um, wanting to create mixed media looks using two color glitter. So Glitter Flake or any heat transfer vinyl that's glitter uh, isn't usually recommended to be direct layered. So this here I have a two color design with silver and pink. Now when I go to do these two designs, uh, what I want to be careful of is I want to make sure that I'm not actually um, directly layering them on top of each other. So I couldn't have this silver directly overlay my pink. I couldn't have my pink overlay my silver. The reason we don't recommend that you direct layer anything on top of a glitter heat transfer vinyl like this is because of that really textured finish. It's the reason we buy it because we love that glitter texture finish but you're not getting a smooth finish or a smooth result for the heat transfer to stick to. Um, so we tend to not be able to get enough of a grab for the adhesive to be life of the garment. Now just like when I had done my um, design with the two colors of fashion film, before I apply my first layer I'd like to line everything up and make sure it's all spaced appropriately on the t-shirt. And that really just helps to ensure, like I said, that you're not um, going to your last layer or going to your second layer and getting there and realizing that you don't have room on your t-shirt or maybe it ended up crooked because you put it a little too far over and didn't compensate for the extra part of the mixed media design. So it's always a good idea to layer everything together like this and then I can tack my first color. So I'll remove that silver off and do that one last. With a design like this, you really can, it doesn't matter which one you put down first as far as application. You just want to make sure um, whichever you do is easier for you to line up the second color. So whichever one makes more sense for you. Now Cat Cut Glitter Flake also allows me to have a tack option where I can tack it for three to five seconds and hot peel the carrier. Same thing just like we saw with Cat Cut Fashion Film. That ability to tack the material and have that faster application with heat transfer products um, just makes it a better um, print for your customers because it allows them to get a more durable finish and allows you to reduce any shrinking that happens over at the heat press. I have glitter flake exposed so I definitely want to make sure to cover this up with my cover sheet. And now I apply this for the full 10 seconds. So for mixed media glitter flake, we're looking 320 degrees, a three to five second tack for your first layer, hot peel that carrier, and then we're gonna inlay our second color for the full 10 seconds. This makes sure both colors get their full application. You're noticing there's a gap spacing between the silver and the pink, and so gap outlines um, are different from trapping. So this would be considered a gap outline where you actually see some of the shirt showing through. A trapping technique would be more or less where it directly um, butts up next to it. You wouldn't have any shirt show through and it looks like a multicolor design. Um, both of these are great ways to create artwork. I tend to find the gap outline gives you more room to play with as far as lining up the design and also creates kind of a cool three color design when you allow the garment to show through on certain shirts. So different ways to create the artwork. Um, if you use cadworkslive.com, we have a ton of video tutorials over at stallstv.com that shows you how to create artwork for mixed media. Um, you can find those actually on the site under the archive section. We just had a live class on creating mixed media artwork, so that will help you to understand the differences between trapping and gap outlines and how to do them appropriately. Okay, so one more product I want to show you guys for um, direct layering. It's just another material that allows for a fast tack and so I like to be able to show those products that allow you to do that fast tack application. Numbering tends to be a very popular way to print items um, with multiple colors and so I want to use a CatCut Thermofilm number to create a two color application. I'm going to use a hooded sweatshirt. You could certainly use this on a um, jersey which would be the most popular application as well. Since I'm doing a hoodie, I'm going to use a unique application where I use the pillow on the inside. That 11 by 15 works well for this, but I like to show a different option. So if you're printing hooded sweatshirts and you don't have a heat press that allows for you to change out the platen to isolate from this um, pocket getting into the way, the pillow would do that. Basically with the pillow it has a little bit of a give to it, so this will sink down in and my transfer will rise up so it will get a nice accurate pressure. 
Now when you add that little bit of depth from the pillow, you're always going to add a little bit of, of a size to, of a pressure change, so you want to make sure to adjust your pressure. Cat cut thermofilm, like I said, also allows for that two second tack, so I'm going to move my direct layers here, knock the camera off above the heat press. I'm going to line up cat cut thermofilm, tack this for two seconds so it has that same two second fast tack. Hot peel my carrier and then I'll line up my second color. The second color works exactly the same way, completely see through carrier, allows you to easily line up the number. And I can apply this for its application. Thermofilm needs a full six to eight seconds for the application, so I'm going to take this down to six seconds. That makes sure the blue and the gray both get their full application that they need. And then I can hot peel that back. If you're wondering why would I use thermofilm versus fashion film, um, fashion film tends to have a lot softer feel to it on the garment. So when I'm doing something direct layered like this on maybe a t-shirt or a light garment, fashion film certainly makes way more sense. It's about half the thickness of thermofilm, so it's going to feel much more softer on the garment. Um, thermofilm really works best for two color numbers on things that are thicker, like a mesh jersey or a um, hooded sweatshirt like this. So if you have something that can handle the weight of the product, it also is great for creating those mixed media looks. And I really love the number style that we have here and just adding some different elements into the number, really make that mixed media look um, like it's got a different dimension to it. So it's not just a standard contour two color number, you're adding that little bit of design element into it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my cover sheet here. Karen, have I had any other questions start to come in? Okay, great. I'm going to start to kick up my heat press for my screen print and transfer applications. But while I'm doing that, I want to talk about layering directly onto digital transfers. And so digital transfers are a great way to create a full color background and then add spot colors for different mixed media, whether it's glitter or hologram or reflective, and really just make part of the designs really stand out um, and just create a unique print. So we see it a lot with patterns like I have here. We also see it a lot with different um, retail inspired designs and things that you can create like that. So I'm going to load this razor back tank onto my platen adjust my pressure for the change in the pillow being removed. The interchangeable or the threadable heat press, I should say, it really is helpful for these razorback tank tops where you have these thick ruchings or these marks coming through. You need to separate those two layers so you don't have a um, mark going through the garment, so that allows me to do that. I'm going to line up my background. This product I'm using for my digital transfer is Cad Color Express Print. Cad Color Express Print makes a good option for layering because just like my other products, I can tack this for five seconds and I can hot peel the carrier. Remember, this allows me to reduce any shrinking that we often see in the background layers that can make alignment very difficult, especially if parts of your design are allowing for glitter to become part of the image. So if you have maybe a photo of a cartoon or a mascot and you're adding just elements of glitter or reflective to the design, that helps to um, just reduce any shrinking that can make it difficult to line up those elements. Since I have that material exposed, I'm going to cover it with my cover sheet. Now if you remember, CACA Glitter Flake applies for 10 seconds, so it would make sense for me to do this full application. The reason I'm not going to is because I don't want to leave a carrier mark indention or have any of the glitter particle from my carrier transfer down to my digital transfer. So I'm just going to tack my glitter flake for three to five seconds, just like I had did for my multicolor applications, and I can peel that carrier. So anytime you're using a material that allows for a tack, glitter flake, fashion film, thermofilm, even if it's a top layer, you can still leverage that tack to reduce carrier marks or any of the glitter transferring over to another film. But of course, you always want to make sure when in doubt to ensure everything gets the full application. So I need to seal this for a full 15 seconds. Express print needs 15 seconds. 
and glitter flake only needs 10. So again, I'm going on that high side, um, just like I've done for a lot of the other materials here. Once that's complete, I have a completely finished design ready to sell. So it just allows me to add that little bit of spot color finish that's really popular um, into the artwork, into the design. So it creates a pretty cool print and finish there. All right, so next I want to talk about directly layering um, CAD cut materials and rhinestones with screen printed transfers. Um, screen printed transfers, if you're not familiar with these, are traditionally a plastisol screen printed ink that's been printed down on a release paper and then creates a heat transfer. They're incredibly um, effective for creating screen printed, print, screen printed finishes with your heat press, um, also for creating um, large numbers of shirts. So if I need to print 100 shirts for a school or 50 shirts for a um, group, then I'm going to definitely want to use screen printed transfers. A lot of the times they become more cost effective depending on the number of colors in your logo. One of the downfalls, of course, of that with screen printed transfers is the inability to customize a lot of the times, um, unless you add some, some extra sheets with customization on them. So I can customize or add additional finishes like glitter um, or foil or reflective to the design using a CAD cut material. Now when I do mixed media with screen printed transfers in CAD cut materials, you want to be careful to make sure that the cat cut material doesn't directly overlay the ink. You always want both of them touching the fabric. I'm going to increase my pressure so I've got a firm pressure for my screen printed transfer. Now I want to keep the heat press at one simple temperature. Screen printed transfers traditionally have a very high heat application. This one I'm using is uh, goof proof. Goof proof applies um, normally for four seconds at 365 degrees. I can actually take this application down to only 340 degrees, and I'll just increase the time for 10 seconds. So it allows for that alternate application, which makes it per perfect for mixed media looks where things normally apply at 320. So I have my heat press set at 340 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and heat apply this transfer for 10 seconds at a firm pressure. And then once that's complete, I can hot peel the carrier, and I can add my personalization um, or add that little bit of glitter to the artwork. So if the musical I'm printing for the school is grease, I've now cut that in glitter flag just to add a little bit of extra design um, to this image. One thing I always tell decorators that you want to make sure you're putting the screen printed transfer down first and then the cat gut material. The reason is I've got to cover this either way because I'll have something exposed and I want to make sure if I have um, to cover it, I'm always not covering the screen printed transfer since it already has that sheet. It can always take some changes to the application. So screen printed transfer down first and then your cat cut material. And the cat cut material is glitter flake. I have it set at 340 for 10 seconds. So I can leave them both at that same temperature at the heat press and I'll be perfect for the applications. Hot peel that carrier and that just creates a unique mixed media look. All right, so for my last print with screen printed transfers, I want to show um, an application using a screen printed transfer with rhinestones. Similar to when you do mixed media with um, screen printed transfers and CAD cut, you want to make sure that the rhinestones are touching the fabric and are not directly overlapping the ink. Um, that's also a principle I cover with heat transfer vinyl. So if I'm doing a CAD cut design with rhinestones, um, then I want to be careful that the rhinestones don't stick to my heat transfer vinyl. You, both, you always want them touching the fabric. I'm going to load this sweatshirt on here. Preheat it to get some of the moisture and wrinkles out. Adjust the pressure a little bit for the thickness. And then I can line up my screen printed transfer. Anytime you mix rhinestones with a screen printed transfer, um, these rhinestones are actually going to below it, going to go below it. So I could essentially apply these in the same application. The reason I'm not going to is I want the rhinestones to always go on last. 
That little bit of depth that you see from the rhinestones will cause a pressure issue that can make the transfer not stick or maybe not stick as long, making it a durable print. So I'm going to go ahead and apply them separately. So I'm just going to line up my screen printed transfer here and apply it at 340 for 10 seconds. This is also the goof proof transfer, so I always go towards that goof proof transfer when I'm doing mixed media with rhinestones and CAD cut, mainly because that application allows me to go down to 340 degrees. I can hot peel it, and it also just makes a nice opacity, so it's really all around just a good product to use for a screen printed transfer. It looks good on all colors, has, still has a nice soft hand to it. And then I can add the rhinestones wherever I want just to add that little bit of element extra to the artwork. Uh, I can even add personalized rhinestones or personalized CAD cut. So for this team, I could put everybody's names on it or add some more personal personalization there with another heat transfer material. And then I'm going to apply the rhinestones for their full application. I'm leaving the temperature at 340 degrees and just applying them for the 10 seconds they need. Traditionally, these rhinestones would be applied at 320, but again, I'm at 340. It's not going to cause any issues with durability. So rather than waiting the 5 or 10 minutes I need for my heat press to cool down 10 deg or 20 degrees, I'm just going to go ahead and apply them and do my full production run. They are cold peel, so I'm going to let them cool down a little bit, especially at that higher temperature. You want to let them cool before you peel the complete carrier back. And then I've got another completed design ready to go. So this kind of gives you some basics to getting started with um, screen printed transfers and different designs. You can add CAD cut or rhinestones. It really just gives you kind of a 101. Here's how to get started with mixed media. Um, what you can create with mixed media with the principles of using a, a two second tack and a multi step application. Techniques with layering directly or trapping and gap outlines. All of that really just is allowing you to kind of really great a um, arsenal where you can create some really unique mixed media prints that really just sell well for your customers. Um, I encourage you to stay tuned to Stalls TV. We're constantly creating mixed media uh, videos and doing blog posts allowing you to stay on top of different ways to layer different products and materials. We have a ton of live classes um, showing different mixed media prints on our site um, that have been archived from the past and also a mixed media section so it allows you to help um, there as well. Also, if you use stalls materials like I've shown here in the application for their heat transfer materials, under the education section of their site, um, you'll notice on the top hand bar you'll see a help and education section, and then you'll drop down to a section that says layering materials. They actually have a heat transfer material compatibility feature that will allow you to pick the materials that you want to use for your foreground, and then it tells you the application you want for the background. So if you go to stalls.com, you'll find that tool there. It's a pretty cool interactive tool. Um, it's helpful for me, I know for sure, so I know a lot of decorators would find it useful as well. Um, Karen, have I had any other questions come in? Perfect. Well, like I said, stay tuned to Stalls TV for more videos. Chat us in on the forum if you ever have questions on mixed media applications, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for attending.